So now we should know uh, or have a little bit more practice being able to get incomes or GDPs per person in different countries into the same units, typical US dollars. So Norway is denoted in krone. We now have a couple different ways uh, to adjust the krone and turn it into US dollars. So one thing before I go into the next part here, so th this um, graph just kind of shows me, um, gives you an idea of, of how much variation there is in the world in terms of standards of living or incomes per person, right? So this is my per capita income per person. And the darker green it is, the richer the country is. And the darker red, the poorer the country is, uh, with white being somewhere in between. And when you look at the variation in colors here on the graph, you can see that there's a lot of disparity in our standards of living across the world. And that's a really important question for economists to try to understand and explain. And that's part of what we're working towards. So I, I want to understand that, but we need to know how to do some of the measurement first. And that's what we're tackling now. So related, I want to talk about productivity. And productivity we're going to define pretty simply, which is basically just my output per workers or hours. Right? So typically I'm going to take my GDP, my real GDP, I'm going to divide by the number of hours worked or by the number of workers. Right? So typically we'll do a GDP per worker, but you could use total hours worked to know how much each hour of work produces. And so that's the idea, right? How much GDP can each worker produce on average? And so GDP per worker is exactly our measure of productivity. So let's take an example here. So you, you'll see some um, examples on some of the, the homework problems where you have to do a little bit of work to determine which country is more productive. So you may have to do a purchasing power parity conversion first to get GDP in dollars. And then you can use our idea of productivity to answer which one is more productive. Um, so there's one, one thing is, so we've got um, two countries here, Vandalay and Sacamano. And so in the very off chance that you happen to be a fan of Seinfeld, those names would mean something to you, right? Uh, so Vandalay Industries and Bob Sacamano feature um, occasionally in Seinfeld episodes. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, I've clearly dated myself as you, you don't know anything about Seinfeld, but uh, in the off chance you happen to have seen it. That may have been funny to you, but I doubt it. Okay, so um, two questions here. First one is, which economy is more productive? And explain why. Well, to answer that question, I need to calculate GDP per worker in each country. So for productivity in Vandalay, I'm going to take GDP worker. Their GDP is in billions, so it's, you know, usually easiest just to write that out. And their population is in millions, 100 and, oh, well, sorry, we don't want the population, we want the number of workers, uh, which is uh, also in millions. We have 80 million. And so I would take their total GDP by the total number of workers. And so what do we end up with here? I get uh, 30.95 when I take... Um, 200 and 2,000, oh, it's 2,476 billion, which is actually, you've got three more zeros there, sorry. So I didn't see the, the comma. So that is 2.476 trillion, which is, it's millions, billions, and trillions. So it's actually going to be um, a factor of 10 more. So 30,950 
for Vandalade, and we could do a similar calculation for Sacramento. GDP per worker is 3.6 trillion, basically. divided by their number of workers, which is 40 million. And we get 90,000. Yeah, yeah, 90,000 would be the answer. We didn't probably didn't need the calculator for that one, right? Um, okay, so based on that, right, GDP per worker, we see that workers are more productive in Sacramento than they are in Vandalay. Each worker on average makes $90,000 worth of GDP in Sacramento compared to $30,000 in Vandalay. So to answer which economy is more productive, I need to consider their GDP per worker. Now, for right now, which economy has the higher standard of living, we will use GDP per person. Where it's the entire population. So remember, not the entire population doesn't necessarily work. Right? So we have retirees, uh, we have households that have only one person in the labor market, et cetera. You have students, uh, kids, and all of this good stuff, right? And so, when I think of standard of living, I want to take that total output produced per person. And so rather than divide by 80 million, I'm going to divide by 190 million for Vandalay. So for Vandalay, it is their GDP the 2.476 trillion dollars divided by 190 million. And that gets us uh, 13,032. That makes sense, right? So GDP per capita is always going to be lower than GDP per worker because not everyone in the population works. So for Sacramento, uh, their GDP per person to measure standard of living their population is 80 million and so we get Uh, 45,000. So in this case, it worked out that the more productive country also has the higher standard of living. That won't necessarily be the case, right? So these are all pretty straightforward. So once you know, you know, which one am I dividing by? For productivity, I'm dividing by employment. For standard of living or GDP per capita, I'm dividing by the population. And that allows me to make some comparisons across countries. So what we're going to do next uh, is to try to understand um, some alternative ways to measure standard of living.